In Fire Monkey 1, material was a property of the 3D shape components. The new material system is based only on shaders and allows an unlimited variation of lighting and materials in one application that can be applied to all the 3D objects through the use of a T material source object that you can use and share among objects. Let's take a look at the new materials and material source components for 3D objects in Rad Studio XZ3. We'll say File, New, FireMonkey Desktop Application, Delphi or C++. Build a 3D FireMonkey application. You can see these new material sources, T Color Material Source, T Texture Material Source, and T Light Material Source. These are all part of the new FMX.Materials unit. So if we put a shape down, for example, a T Sphere, and make it a little larger, and we look and see now we've got a material source. In FireMonkey 1, there was materials built into each of the 3D shapes. Now we can just put down a material source. So for example, uh, put a color material source into our application. And then we can set the color, for example, purple, and then go to the 3D sphere and set its material source. And now we have a purple sphere. We can add another material source, make that material source a different color, royal blue, go to the sphere and choose now the color material source 2, we have a royal blue sphere. Now using these textures is, is a new enhancement and improvement in FireMonkey 2. This class, the T texture class, uses GPU memory to store real data. We also have a T light material source. The surface of a FireMonkey 3D object is defined by its material. FireMonkey 3D materials are based on shaders. This allows an unlimited variation of lighting and materials in one application. So these different 3D shapes, for example, the sphere and the cone, can share a material source. So we can have uh, different material sources and associate them with all our different 3D shapes. We can also set a texture, choose a, a bitmap for the texture, either a place where we have picture or texture, and then we can associate using the material source, that texture material source, and take these penguins and wrap them around the sphere. Uh, extruded objects like a T rectangle 3D has three material sources. The main material source for the surface, the shaft material source, and the back. And we can assign different material sources of different types to each of those. So for example, back here, we've got our penguins. On the shaft, we've got the royal blue. And on the front, we've got uh, purple. Now let's take a look at T-Light material source. T-Light material source allows you to set colors for both the ambient light, the diffuse light, and the emissive light. Emissive color determines whether a surface emits its own light. So for example, uh, let's set the emissive color. Instead of null, we'll set it to uh, spring green. And then we'll associate with this cone the light material source. And now that cone emits its own color. A diffuse color only interacts directly with light, including the angle of incidence. With no light, it has no effect. And the ambient color is meant to provide a base color to surfaces so they may be seen. In the real world, light is reflected from many directions onto a surface. But in a 3D scene, it would be difficult to define all that light. So ambient color is activated by any light in the space. If you don't have a light, then it has no effect. 